Well, hello there, friends, and welcome back to another episode of the Midweek Refill. I am your host, Bishop A. Reginald Littman. I serve as senior pastor of the New Mountaintop Church, and we invite you to join us right here every single Wednesday for the Midweek Refill and every Sunday morning for our live worship experience, which begins at 930 AM. If you're anywhere in the greater metropolitan Atlanta area, we're only 30 minutes west of downtown Atlanta in a city called Winston, Georgia. That is a suburb of Douglasville, just 20 minutes from Six Flags going I-20 West right off the post road exit. So we'd love to have you to come and visit us for a live worship experience. And if you live you know, in another state or another part of Georgia, make sure you can catch us live right here on this same YouTube channel. To those of you who may be watching us on Facebook, we welcome you, excited to have you. I want everybody to please like, share, subscribe, comment, and do all those wonderful things. We're trying to reach 1,000 subscribers, and you can help us do that simply by hitting that subscribe bell and make sure you hit that little button and set it to all. That way, every time new content is loaded, you'll be among the first to know. Well, listen. We're jumping in to part four of our series about trusting God with your entire life. In this episode, we're going to be teaching about trusting God with your fitness, with your fitness. Now, hold on. Don't touch that dial. Don't leave. I know a lot of us are not physically fit. I fall into that category myself. But guess what? We can all do something about it to make our physical life better, particularly when we understand that God wants us to be at our very best mentally, spiritually, physically, financially, and familial. So that means with your family, familially. All right. I didn't make that word up. I promise you. So I'm so glad to have you here. And please jump into the comments and let us know which one of the principles that we're teaching is going to be your challenge for the week. Now, when we're talking about trusting God with your fitness, we're not just talking about your body, but everything connected to your body, which includes your mind as well. Because if your body is healthy, but your mind is at a state of anxiety, never have any peace or the reverse, where your mind is always at peace and always joyful, but your body is out of whack, you are indeed off balance. So here's the first principle for us learning how to really trust God with our fitness. So number one, God wants us to understand the necessity of letting go of anxiety and trusting God's plan. All right, so I already know off the cuff, that's for a whole lot of you who are watching me and listen to me right now. I want you to type me in the comments if this relates to you. If this first principle is going to be your challenge for the week, type me in the comments, all right? So letting go of anxiety and trusting God's plan. You know, when we think about the word anxiety, angst, worry, and all of these types of things, we are admonished, even in the scriptures, to not worry about things, to not allow ourselves to become so anxious, because when we become anxious, we're focused on what's wrong and not at all on what's right. When we become anxious and worried and nervous, listen, it throws our mind off track. It throws our spirit off track. It throws our body off track at some point because stress and worry can cause heart issues and blood pressure issues and diabetic issues. It can cause us to eat more than we should or to have what we like to refer to as comfort food. You know that food that you can't sleep or something is troubling you and you're like, you know what? A big bowl of ice cream would satisfy everything right now, right? <laughs> but it does not. So, when we are holding on to our anxiety, we're not really trusting God's plan because when we worry, honestly, you know what we're doing? We're taking matters into our own hands and we're saying to ourselves mistakenly, I can handle this even better than God can. 
Well, let's look at what the scriptures teach us concerning letting go of anxiety and trusting in God's plan as we talk this week about trusting God with your fitness. So the scriptures teach us, Paul writing here in Philippians 4, verse 6 and 7, listen to what he says, do not be anxious about anything. Uh-oh, that just messed some of us up because our first name is, is Jack and our middle name is anxious, right? Or Jacqueline and your middle name is anxious. Paul says, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, here's how you handle life and the perplexities that face you in your life by prayer and petition. With thanksgiving, present your request to God. So Paul is saying here that our job is not to worry about the things that are happening in our lives. Our job is to pray about the things that are happening in our lives and literally to petition God and to do it with praise. So we pray. That means that we are seeking God for guidance in a situation that we are reaffirming our trust in him. We petition, which means that we are specific in asking for what it is that we want or that we feel that we need, or better than that, asking God to supply what we need because we acknowledge and recognize the fact that we really don't know what we need, right? So that's petition. But then there's a certain way that we must do it. Paul says, with thanksgiving. So we pray, which is to seek God for direction. We petition, which is to ask God for specific needs, but then we do it with thanksgiving. Why does Paul throw thanksgiving in here? Simply because when we pray and when we believe God to meet a need, the evidence of that faith is thanking him in advance for what you believe him to do and ultimately thanking him for accomplishing his will in us and in our lives. So we are to pray, we are to petition God, and we are to praise God, to offer thanksgiving for what we've prayed about and for what we have petitioned God for. And he says, present your request to God. Now watch this, that just jumped out at me right there, church. Because when you make a presentation, remember, when you go to a restaurant, or when you go to a webinar, a seminar, even this Bible study that you're watching right now, this is a presentation and presentation is everything. Let me give you a good example. The last time that you went to buy a car, I'm talking about from a dealership, not necessarily from somebody's yard or from your cousin or that kind of thing. Presentation sold you on the car way before you really knew you were going to buy the car. There's science to that. Uh, the new car smell, we're all familiar with it. Well, that's something they sprayed in that car before you got there. Why? Because they wanted to condition your mind to be in a buying mode. All right. And so they wash the car. Now, if you show up at a dealership and there's, there's mud all over the wheels and there are chicken crumbs underneath the seat and uh, chicken boxes on the floor in the back. Chances are, by virtue of the fact that that's a poor presentation, you're not going to buy that car. Listen to what Paul says here. He says, when you come before God, the way that you get God's attention, the way that you get, if you will, God's buy-in is in your presentation. How you come to God matters. That's the point. Think about that when you're dating someone, how they approach you, how they dress, how they smell are all presentations that can either lead to favor or forgotten, <laughs> right? You're going to hit that next button and swipe left or something when the presentation is not what it should be. So Paul is telling us here that rather than worrying about life, hey, make a spectacular, sincere presentation to God concerning your prayer, concerning your petition, and even your praise. So our prayer should be uh, one that honors God. Our praise should be praise that honors God. And uh, our petition should be a petition that honors God. Because ultimately, we want to recognize God as our source 
and that we acknowledge him as such. And there's no question about the fact that we're coming to him because he is the one who can supply and satisfy every need that we have. Amen. So don't allow worries about your health, about your fitness to consume you. You know, I've, I've had uh, some major complications uh, that worried me. And you probably have at some point or you have uh, have someone in your family or some loved one who has had some major uh, health issues to cause you to worry. But ultimately, friends, God does not want us to worry about our health and fitness issues to the point that it consumes us. Instead, what we need to do is bring every concern to God in prayer. And when we come, remember, everything is about presentation. So you want to come to God with your prayer concerns in prayer and with trust that he has your well-being in his hands. And how many know? that you're far better off in God's hands than you will ever be in your own hands. So it is impossible to hold uh, a lot of things in your hands and hold someone else's hand at the same time. It's just not going to work. You know, if you've got a, a lot of stuff in your hands, how are you going to hold somebody else's hands when your hands are full? God wants to extend his hand of support to you, his hand of miracles, his hands of blessings. So never allow worries to control your life. Don't let worries about your health, about your fitness, even about your conditions that you may have in your life that may be a, uh, what is often referred to as a chronic illness. But that chronic illness does not have to be a chronic worry. Instead, learn how to bring these concerns to God in prayer and trust that he has your well-being in his hands and at his heart. And he does, my friends. So here's number two. Honor God with your body. Honor God with your body. Now, what does the scriptures teach us, teach us concerning honoring God with your body? Well, it's very important to understand 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 and 20. It reads like this. Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. And I love Paul's writings. And in particular, he's so clear here that we don't belong to ourselves. We belong to the Most High God. And the body that we live in does not belong to us. It's just like a rented house, a rented car, rented vehicle, rented property. God is the landlord. And at any point he gets ready, he can call us out of this property. And our spirit exits this body and he evicts us, if you will. And of course, those of us who believe in the fun foundational, fundamental Christian beliefs of scripture, believe that there is some place else that our spirit moves to once we are evicted from this property. So to understand this verse in context of our lesson tonight about honoring God with our body, we should understand that exercise and healthy eating are not just about the personal benefits. No, far more than that. They are also acts of worship through which we are honoring the body God has given us and consequently honoring God with our practices. Let's go to number three, because a lot of times we can overdo it on one end and underdo it on another. So point number three is that we must remember that balance is key. Now, this is quite important because, again, it is very easy to get so caught up in fitness that we minimize faith or to get so caught up in the faith that we minimize fitness. I have known so many people in my lifetime that insisted on eating after every evening service. I mean, going to a buffet and just having a spirit of gluttony after they just got through talking about casting the devil out of somebody and then develop heart disease or 
some other illness that was preventable or to some degree preventable. And then they're rebuking the devil and getting back in the prayer line. But this time they don't even realize that they're there because of their own actions. You know, you and I can not only worry ourselves to death, but we can eat ourselves to death. I heard someone say a few years back that many of us are digging our own graves one spoon at a time. So how do we balance life in terms of faith and fitness? I'm glad you asked that question. The Bible answers that question in Ecclesiastes 3 and 1. Solomon talking here says there is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. It is so important that we balance both faith and fitness because balancing time for exercise, for rest, and for spiritual growth is absolutely essential. So don't let your fitness routine become an obsession that takes you away from other important aspects of life, such as faith, such as family, such as relationships and building relationships and friendships and worship. All of those ships are important and we all need all of those ships on the water of our life to continue to sail because God absolutely wholeheartedly values balance in our lives. You know, we can even see that from the perspective that in the creation scene, he created day and night, darkness and light. Why? Because he values balance and wants us to have balance in our own lives. So as we move forward, talking about trusting God with our fitness, not only do we need balance, but there's something else that's going to help us with that balance. And if you're getting anything out of this content, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Make sure you like it. Make sure you comment. Make sure you share it, subscribe. It. Oh, I forgot to tell you that right there in the description box below the video is a free PDF handout that accompanies this teaching. It's filled with other discussion questions that you can dive deeper into this study. You can even get somebody on the phone or on a Zoom class and create a Bible study from this that you can have a discussion and take a deep dive into the scripture. So make sure that you go to the link there and get the free PDF handout. All right, let's go to number four. So the fourth principle for this teaching about trusting God with your fitness is be content in every situation. Now, that's a whole lot easier said than done, isn't it? Especially when we live in such a technologically driven time where everything is about acquiring more, buying the latest, keeping up with the Joneses and all of that. But being content is actually a measure that will help us to be more fit spiritually, emotionally, and even mentally and socially. Because so often we end up comparing ourselves to other people. Let's look at what Paul teaches us about being satisfied, being happy while we're still growing. In Philippians 4, verse 11 through 13, Paul writes this, I have learned to be content, whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or living in want or in need. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. So most of us are familiar or have at least heard Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me in the King James Version. But the preceding verses really help to explain why Paul says that. Because Paul was saying, you know, I have had times of plenty. I've had times of little. I've had times where I was celebrated. I've had times that I was hated. I've had times that I was doing well and times that I wasn't doing so hot. But watch this. Whatever the circumstances are, I've learned to be content. Content at peace. 
I've learned to have joy. I've learned to have satisfaction. I've learned that everything does not resolve around things. Everything in life does not revolve around possessions, nor does everything in life revolve around even my physical appearance. Now, you know, Paul was known as a person who had some type of visual malady that was obvious that others could see. It is thought that it was a result of his experience with God on the Damascus road, that it left him in some way partially blind or some way physically impaired. And so for Paul to talk about being content when he went through so much is really a strong message for you and I, because we often have situations in our lives where we are not content the moment we look over at other people. <laughs> Have you ever been there before? I mean, some of us, when we do get the opportunity to go to the beach for vacation, we're not even comfortable going to the beach because we're so busy covering up and looking at everybody else. I'm not saying you should be immodest, but please catch what I'm saying. What I am saying is next time you go to the beach, I want you to take a good look around because you will discover everybody there does not have a Baywatch body. Come on, talk to me if you can. There are people of all sizes that are at the beach, having a blast, having fun, living it up, enjoying their vacation without regard for what everybody's going to think. You know what's wrong with some of us? What's wrong with some of us is that we have approval addiction. We need people to approve us or act like they do in order for us to feel validated. But please understand this, child of God. Learn in whatever con condition you are, and I'm talking about physically now, because Paul had a physical condition that made him look awfully different from other people. But he says, hey, I've learned to be happy, satisfied, joyful, with who I am, where I am, and how I am. The moment you come to accept the fact that God accepts you as you are, though he wants you to be better, he accepts you as you are. Um, and I have to make this really plain. So whether we're talking about small, medium, or large, okay? I think you got my message. God accepts us as we are, even though he wants us to always be working on where we are and becoming better and better and better at whatever we're doing. God accepts us as we are. So if God can accept us as we are, knowing that he made us as we are, then we too should learn to be happy with ourselves and content because God gives us the strength to do all things. So whether you have a lot, have a little financially, or you have a lot, have a little as far as your family, or you have a lot, have a little as far as your flesh, y'all ain't gonna talk to me. <laughs> Learn to be happy and content with what you have. And that's the point, that's the principle, is being content in every situation. Walking in confidence, thanking God for every part of you, every ounce of you, whatever you, thank God for what God has given you and who you are and show up in this world big, bright, bold, and beautiful because you're fearfully and wonderfully made. And you can do all things through him who gives you the strength to do it. That's Jesus, right? So I want to challenge you to avoid comparison traps. Avoid comparison traps. Stop looking over the fence at your neighbor at how fit they look and how perfect their life looks and and how and then comparing yourself to them. Stop all of that. God doesn't do that when he looks at his children. Why should you do that when you look at other people? But understand instead that you are God's creation and he loves you, you're his masterpiece and he's he loves you as you are even though he knows we all have room for improvement. My beautiful wife often says, the greatest room in the world, the biggest room in the world is the room for improvement. Meaning we all have space to improve, but we must recognize that God loves us as we are. So I want you to avoid the trap of comparing, comparing yourself to other people and learn to be content with where you are, 
recognizing that you are on a journey. You're on a journey. You've not arrived. You've not reached your goal. You've not reached that place of destination, but you're on a journey towards fitness, emotionally, physically, financially, family-wise, whatever it may be. And always remember that God is the source that will give you the strength to do what it is that you need to do. Every goal you have set, God will give you the strength to do what you need to do. So here's number five, be a steward of your health for the glory of God. Be a steward. You know what a steward is? A steward is a person who is responsible for that which belongs to another. They take care, they manage that which belongs to another. If you've ever uh, lived in a rented home or an apartment, your job, if you've ever rented an office, um, ever had a business, your job is to take care of that which belongs to another. So you don't just walk in and paint the walls with green and yellow polka dots, right? Because it's not yours. Same thing should happen with our body. There are certain, there's a certain way, family, that, that we must approach everything we do in life. And that is for the glory and the honor of our great God, because we recognize this is not ours, it's his. We're just a steward of this least property. So we have to understand the importance of that. And Paul gives us the importance of that in 1 Corinthians 10, 31. He says, so whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. So whether you eat or drink, so in your eating, in your drinking, whatever it is you're doing, do it all for the glory of God. So your health and fitness are not just about personal achievement, but it's about glorifying God. So what we eat and what we drink, and for some of you, what we guzzle and what we sip when we take a nip, <laughs> everything we do must be with the idea of glorifying God. So ask yourself a question, will this glorify God? And if it won't, then that might be your indication that it is not something that you need to partake of. Amen. All right. So let's move on. So God wants us to understand the necessity of being responsible as stewards of our bodies and how it can in fact be a form of worship. So when you reject that which will be unhealthy for your system, whatever it is, whether it is nicotine or vaping, or whether it is um, alcohol or whether it is sugar, whatever it may be, when you reject it, simply for the fact that you want to be a good steward of the body, that is worship. I want to know in the comments, how does that expand your definition of worship? This whole concept that when you reject something that's not good for you, not healthy for you, that is actually worship. I want to know your thoughts on that in the comments. You know, by placing your fitness journey in God's hands and aligning it with the scriptural teachings, you're not just working towards physical well-being, but you're also developing spiritual wholeness. And that is so incredibly powerful. I wish I had another 30 minutes just to talk about that part alone. But I want to know your thoughts and comments about this week's teaching. And don't forget to go and check the description box below and get the PDF handout that goes along with this teaching. Hey, I'm so thankful, grateful to you for watching. Make sure you like, make sure you share this with somebody you love, follow us, make sure that you subscribe and do all those great things. I want to get to a thousand subscribers for our church channel and you can help me do that. I've enjoyed teaching this lesson to you and all of this whole series to you. No telling where we're going next week. We might have something else to trust God with. Hey, make sure you show up. I'll show up next week. And don't forget to join us Sunday morning live at 9.30 a.m. or catch the replay in your own time zone. This is Bishop Littman. I love you. And until next time, you go with God.